Hi everybody, this is Kyle from Pisces Pet Emporium and today we're going to talk about reptile substrates and help you choose the right substrate for your pet at home. The first thing we're going to talk about is terrarium liners. Terrarium liners are probably one of the safest alternatives to a substrate in your tank, especially for juvenile and baby reptiles. You have the option of a carpet, a grass mat, or even a sand mat. Some of the advantages to terrarium liners is that they're inexpensive, easy to use, easy to clean, and help prevent impaction with your reptiles. However, they don't hold humidity very well and can't be used for planted tanks. Terrarium liners are great for baby reptiles, especially baby bearded dragons, leopard geckos, fat tail geckos, and other small reptiles that may suffer from impaction. The second substrate we're gonna talk about is cocoa fiber. Plantation soil is a great substrate to use for anything that requires high humidity. The ground up cocoa fiber can come in either a brick form or pre-made in bags. It's excellent for creatures like tarantulas, scorpions, frogs, and other animals that require high humidity inside their enclosures. The plantation soil is a great substrate for mixing with other substrates as well. You can add sand to it to help with burrowing animals. You can plant your plants directly into it for live terrariums. And it can be used as a nesting material for your reptiles when they're laying their eggs. It can be used for species like Pac-Man frogs, dart frogs, tree frogs, crested geckos, leaf tail geckos, tarantulas, scorpions, hermit crabs, even some snakes. It's best to avoid using this substrate for any desert species that don't like high humidity, like Euromastics and bearded dragons. The next substrate we're gonna talk about is aspen. Aspen bedding has become one of the most recognized and commonly used substrates for snakes. Aspen doesn't carry any of the toxic fumes that can harm your reptile. It's inexpensive and because of its light color, makes any poops that are on there stand out like a sore thumb. However, aspen isn't very good at holding any humidity and isn't recommended for smaller animals like baby bearded dragons or other species that might accidentally ingest it and cause impaction. It's an ideal substrate for king snakes, corn snakes, ball pythons, common bones, other terrestrial snakes, and even hedgehogs and small rodents. Now we're going to talk about cypress mulch. Cypress mulch is one of my personal favorite substrates to use. It's great for holding moisture, which will really help with your humidity inside your closure. The light color makes it easy to spot any poops that are on it, which makes it very easy to keep clean. And as well, it doesn't splinter. As an added bonus, cypress mulch can be mixed with other substrates like plantation soil to really increase the amount of humidity. Cypress mulch is great for tropical species, especially tortoises, snakes, and other reptiles that require a high humidity inside of their enclosure. Our last substrate we're going to talk today about is sand. Exoterra Desert Sand has no sharp edges and the fine grains make it very easy to sift and to burrow underneath. It clumps fecal matter and is easy to clean up. Desert Sand looks very natural to help create an attractive environment for your desert species. It's a great substrate to use for Euromastics, zebra tail lizards, butterfly agamas, sandfish, and desert banded skinks. However, it's not an ideal substrate to use for any reptiles that require high humidity, like frogs, crested geckos, green iguanas, water dragons, and even Chinese cave geckos. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit today about reptile substrates. If you have any questions, feel free to call us or contact us online anytime.